Are you here for the free pilot training? That's awesome, because today on Lesson 18, we'll be discussing Class D airspace. We're going to be talking about everything you need to know as a private pilot to go into this airspace. So sit back and relax, and let's knock out some studying. Class D airspace is controlled airspace that surrounds smaller towered airports. Usually it's cylinder shaped with a five statute mile radius that starts at the surface and goes up to 2,500 AGL. But to get the exact specs, we need to look at a VFR sectional of the airport we want to fly into. We can tell we're looking at class delta airspace by this blue segmented circle surrounding the airfield. The segmented circle is telling us that this airspace starts at the surface. But don't be fooled when you see a magenta segmented circle. This is actually class echo airspace that starts at the surface. The way I remember the difference is that this magenta airfield in the center means this airport is not towered. When you see a blue airport like this, it means that the airfield has a tower. And class delta airspace is designed for smaller towered airports. Now we already mentioned that class D airspace starts at the surface, but if you want to know where the top is, look inside this little square right here. This altitude is expressed in hundreds, so the top of this class delta airspace is 3,500 MSL. Now occasionally, you'll see this number with a minus sign in front of it. This just means that the airspace goes up to, but does not include, the 3,500 MSL. So if I'm flying my airplane at 3,500 MSL here, technically I'm not in the class delta airspace. All right, let's look at some of the rules we need to know before we can go into class delta. First, we must establish two-way radio communications with ATC prior to entry. Then we must maintain those communications while within that airspace. Do these rules look familiar? Yeah, they're the exact same ones for Class Charlie airspace. Let's call up Joplin Regional. They look like a nice place to stop for fuel. Before I call them up, I'll make a quick mental note of exactly where I am. Then I'll grab the ATIS. Joplin Tower, Cessna 5678 Papa, 10 miles to the southeast, inbound with Yankee. Sometimes it can be beneficial to let ATC pick the runway for you. That's why here, for my request, I just told them that I'm inbound. Aircraft calling, Shea Altitude! Oh shoot, I forgot to tell them my altitude. But first, can I enter the airspace yet? Nope, not yet. They haven't set our call sign. Joplin Tower, this is Cessna 5678 Papa at 2,000 feet. Yeah, Cessna 5678 Papa, Joplin Tower, we see you now. Altimeter 3002, make right base for runway 36. When you hear this, the first thing that should go through your head is, I can go in now, but I haven't been cleared to land yet. When they tell you which runway they want you to use, this is not the same as getting a landing clearance. 3002, right base for runway 36, Cessna 5678, Papa. All they need to hear is the basic information, all the numbers, and your call sign. Cessna 5678 Papa, Joplin Tower, you're number two now following a Piper Cub on one mile final. Clear to land, runway 36. Okay, now I'm cleared to land, but there's somebody in front of me. We need to try to find that guy and let the tower know when we see him. Then at the very least, we need to repeat our landing clearance back to tower. But I think I just spotted him. Traffic in sight, clear to land runway 36, Cessna 5678 Papa. Next, let's take a quick look at the VFR weather minimums for Class Delta airspace. Once again, this is the worst weather we can have and still be able to fly VFR in this airspace. We need to have at least three statute miles of visibility. Then we need to stay away from the clouds. We need to stay at least 500 feet below the clouds. 2,000 feet away from the sides, and 1,000 feet away from the tops. And if you remember from the last lesson, this is the exact same weather minimums as Class C airspace. Don't forget our memory aid of 3152, or three Cessna 152s. As far as our equipment requirements are concerned, all we need to go into Class Delta is a working two-way radio. How else are we going to talk to that crusty old controller from Joplin? To operate in Delta, you don't need ADSB or a transponder. Hey, I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to smash like for me before you get out of here. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. And I'll see you on the next episode of Free Pilot Training.